Good morning. It's great to be here. I'm Joe Hellerstein. This is Tutti Tagerly. Today we're going to talk to you about big data moonshots and ground control. I've been working in data for about 25 years, and I have to say I've never experienced a time like this, a time where data people are transforming computation, transforming technology, and really transforming society. And I know that there's many people out there and many of us in this room who are ready to plant a flag and make headlines for uh, changing the world. And I have to say that you know, this is no time for creeping incrementalism. This is a really a time for big data moonshots. So folks who are out there and are ready to make these headlines, we have to remember, everybody loves uh, a moonshot, everybody loves a headline. But when you think about it, you have to remember the backstory. You have to remember how these guys got to their headline. How did they get to the moon? Well, they didn't get there by themselves. Any moonshot project is the result of many people. Ground control, if you will. Hundreds of professionals working for a long period before and during the main event. So how are things different in big data moonshots than they are in this picture from NASA? Well, one difference, at least in popular assumptions, is in terms of personnel. So there's a persistent mythology in the community, and particularly in the press, that data scientists are heroes, that they carry three skills, modeling, coding, and visualizing, and that big data moonshots are all astronauts all the time. Now, the truth is you can't staff a project like this for many reasons, not least of which is you can't hire that many heroes. This is true for astronauts. It's equally true for big data projects. And if you go in with this mythology, you're building a moonshot that's never going to get off the ground. One of the biggest problems that people talk about when they talk about getting these things off the ground is the problem that 80% of the work in any data project is in cleaning the data. And that's a quote from DJ Patil during his time when he was running the data science team at LinkedIn and really innovating in this field. So it's an old problem, a persistent problem, but what I'll tell you is that despite many attempts, automation is not the solution to data transformation and data cleaning. This is a problem that fundamentally relies on human judgment, on taking particular data sets and transforming them for specific use cases. And in the end, any big data project is going to succeed or fail based on empowering people, a wide variety of skilled people, to get the job and do, get the uh, task off the ground. With that, I'd like to hand off to Tudi Tagerly, who's been uh, coming from the design world, building consumer products for people for many years. Thank you, Joe. Oops, can we go back one slide, please? So enterprise software is not traditionally known for being well-designed. We believe that it needs to change to really focus on the user. If you take a look at this image, going back to ground control, and you look at the two users in the foreground, they're surrounded by four or five screens each. That's in addition to having to look up, pay attention to the astronauts, pay attention to the map of the world. In this life or death, in this crucial situation, all the burden to not mess it up is entirely on the user. If we look in the data transformation space, historically, it hasn't been a lot better. The original historical command line, super powerful. You can do anything you want with it as long as you know what to type in. Burden on the user. Things didn't get much better, got prettier, but not much better with early enterprise software applications. And even if you look at something modernly designed, something that blurs the intersection between consumer and business apps, something like Excel, there's still a lot of burden on the user in that you've got to select particular tasks, you've got to work on pull downs, you've got to know what macros to write. So we believe in designing software that starts to remove the burden from the user. If you look at Spike Jones' movie, Her, he creates a futuristic world where the intersection between machine and human is so seamless that Joaquin Phoenix can fall in love with his operating system. She has the full context, the full awareness, and continually learns from what he does, putting the burden on the intelligent machine, not the human. Contrast this to something like Tom Cruise is the master of the world. He has all of his screens. He can move them left and right, along with his little magic gloves, as long as he leaves his hands up in the air like this. A lot of burden. So at Trifacta, how we do this is we rely on a core set of three design principles against which to set the product vision and make sure that the experience can match that. I'll tell you about each of them. 
The first one, visually simple, functionally strong. When you want to get your eyeballs on a set of data, we believe that there's two things that you want to see. One is the actual data values, and the second is a simple roll-up, a simple visual summary of what's happening. Rather than overwhelm with many beautiful, pretty, overwhelming visualizations, we instead want to do one universally understood visual, letting you move from raw data to simple histograms that bin the data based on the data context, the data type, the data values. Our second design principle is elegance at scale. Since we cover data from the kilobytes to the petabytes, and petabytes is hard to comprehend on a human scale, we let you focus on one single detailed data value, work with that, and then let the system amplify, magnify your capabilities to work at scale, allowing seamless movement between micro and macro. Our last and most important design principle is user empowerment. Humans are naturally emotional, fallible creatures, so when you crack open a new data set, we really allow for exploration. What's in my data? Exploration, discovery. And as you continue to work with it, we allow for mistakes, for failures with no penalty, and we allow for continual iteration, continual iteration until, yes, we want to celebrate success with you. Your data is all green. Great. Proceed to analysis. In addition to these three design principles, we rely on a core set of user personas against which to validate our designs. The first is Leanne, the data scientist. As Joe alluded to, and DJ, she spends 80% of her time wasting her time on cleaning data. The second is John, the business analyst. Before, he, perhaps because he didn't have enough programming skill or technical background, wasn't ever able to get his hands dirty, his hands directly on the big data. Now he can. And our last user persona is Ben, the IT programmer. He just wants to make the organization more efficient, perhaps via self-service. With this, I'll turn it back to Joe to show you how we do this and give you a demo. Thanks, Tudy. So this company is rooted in research that we were doing at Berkeley and Stanford that led to this interaction model that enables this technology. We call it predictive interaction. And the way this begins is by users actually interacting with data visualizations on the raw data. As they interact visually with their uh, data, algorithms built by Trifacta are predicting what actions the user might want to take based on the data that's in the system and based on the context of what the user has been doing and is doing in the interaction. And given this list of recommendations from software, the user can oversee them and preview which of those recommendations is the one they want to choose, perhaps adjust, and ratify. And in general, the user is going to do this step by step, iteratively, sometimes moving back, often moving forward, to get their data massaged into the shape that it needs to be for analysis. So it's very much an iterative process with a human in the loop. And with that, I'd like to give you a sneak peek, at least, in the short time we have at the software. So when you crack open a data set in Trifecta, you immediately get your eyes on the actual data values, as well as on best effort visualizations of the data. Now, these visualizations are things that are not just static. You can interact with them. All of them are live. And as you interact with visualizations, the system is predicting transformations that you might want to make to the data. And you can overview what those transformations will do to the data with previews, choose the one that you want, and add it to a growing script of transforms. So this is something that you iterate with over and over. In addition to interacting with the visualizations, you can interact with anomaly detection visually, see errors in the data, get recommendations on how to remediate those issues, modify the script in the data, and add it to this accumulation of steps that you're taking with your data. Very powerful to actually get into the data values themselves, highlight features of interest in text and in numbers, and get the system to learn from repeated examples of what you're interested in and learn patterns that can be quite rich for transforming your data. And you can iterate back and forth with this until the system gets the point, usually with just a very few examples, and is able to then give you the transforms you want to clean up your data. 
If you want to expand your data set with additional data, it's easy to go in and join in new data sets and do lookups and put things together that were originally separated. And in general, what the technology is doing, the system learns from your interactions, and you learn from the system's recommendations what's possible to do with your data and what kinds of transformations might make the data better. So it's a virtuous cycle. When you're done working with the data in the browser, you can go ahead and translate your sequence of transformations to code that can run at arbitrary scale in platforms like Hadoop. So that's a picture of the kinds of things we're building at Trifacta. We very much believe that uh, people who are working with data are the focus of what the, the community should be working on, and that data transformation is one of the key challenges that we can make both agile and actually quite fun to work with. Thanks. Thank you.